Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can extract the values from checkbox input elements like you see on screen and store the resulting data in an array or in a JavaScript object. So the underlying markup here is three input elements. So of course you need to make sure each one of those is of type checkbox and you also want to specify a value so this is going to be the value that will be stored in an array if the user checks one of the checkboxes or the value of the property that is stored in an object. So these input elements are embedded in a div with a class of skills. So this is purely for styling purposes to be able to select it with CSS. But what is necessary is this form element that everything is embedded in, including this button of type submit. So when the user clicks on this button, the input is going to be processed down below in the script. So I've already selected the form using the query selector. What I'm going to do next is to add an event listener to the form listening out for the submit event. So this will occur when the user clicks on this button here of type submit. And when that is clicked, I want to run this associated function and the first thing you want to do if you are handling the submission of a HTML form in JavaScript is to prevent the default behavior in which HTML tries to send the form and it also refreshes the page. So you want to prevent that happening because we're handling the extraction of the data using JavaScript. So you can do that by calling the prevent default method on the automatically available event object. Now to get the values from the checkboxes, what you want to do is select all of the checkboxes. So you can do this by the type attribute, which is checkbox. So down in the event listener. So this is going to extract the data when the form is submitted. You first of all want to select all of those input elements of type checkbox. So you can do that with the query selector by selecting all elements with the type attribute whose value is checkbox. So now that we've selected all of the checkboxes, what we want to do is iterate through each of them. So for that, I'm going to use the for each method. So in each iteration, I have available to me each item. So if I only want to store the ones that a user's checked in an array, then I want to check if each of these is actually checked. So I can do that by checking the checked property on each item. So if this is true, if the user has selected it, then you want to push that particular value for that item into an array. So I'll create the array here. I'll call it skills. And then inside the if statement, I say skills.push. And what I want to push into the skills array each time is item dot value, okay? And at the end of this, we'll log the value of skills to the console. So let's see if that's working now. So I'll select HTML and you see an array just containing HTML has been logged to the console. If I check all of them, I have an array with all three items and if I don't check any of them, then I just end up with an empty array. So this is one way to store the data, but what if you want it in key value format? So in this case, you would have HTML as the property key and then the value as true or false. Same for CSS and JavaScript. So this is also possible with some modifications to our code. So the first change to make is the skills array it's not going to be an array, it's going to be an object. Now, a big difference here is that I don't just want to store the values of checkboxes that are ticked in the object now. I also want to store those that are unchecked with the value of false. So I'll say else if item.checked equals false. Okay, and then I'm going to want to change what I'm doing inside of each of these blocks 
because I'm not pushing into an array anymore. So what I'm doing this time is creating a new property on the skills object. So I want this to be item dot value. So this would be, for example, uh, HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. So if the checkbox is checked, then I want the property value to be true. So I'm just going to copy this into the next block and change the property value to false. So this is the property value when the item is not checked. So let's take a look at the result now. It is still stored under the reference skills. So if I fill in now HTML and CSS in the form and I submit it, you now see even though JavaScript wasn't ticked, it's still in the object. Now the value is false and the value is true for both of the checkboxes that I ticked. And if I select all of them, you see that the value is always true. If I don't select any of them, then the value is false for all of them. Now, if you want the data contained in this object in array format, you can do that quite easily by simply passing in the object to object dot entries so that's going to create an array of arrays containing the data so you'll see when I submit the form here so there's three arrays in the first position in each of the arrays is what was the property value and in the second position is the boolean true or false values specifying whether a user checked the box or not so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.